start it. Hmm. Do you want the red on so that there's this? Yeah, we could. Let's turn it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's definitely do it. And let's just make sure we put that brick up on the on the charge. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know we can go in for the settings on the fan, but well, it's uh, it, it cuts down. After yeah, yeah, I know. Boot. It's a little, it's a little crazy though. Yeah. And good. Make that even smaller. The live chat. No picture yet. Maybe it's a delay. Guess we'll see in a minute. Good, good, good. Interesting. See, at the moment, this stream should be now pushing to And it's not. It says we're live. It says the internet can totally see me now. To stop, use your encoder. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't see anybody. And uh, yeah, do you want to go to the address? Uh, so it's youtube.com uh, forward slash the C47. Okay. I'm, I'm a subscriber. I'll just go to subscriptions. Here we go, live. Let's see if you see a picture. I see a commercial. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got one person. That's you. That may be me. That's funny. There you go. Yeah, there's a picture. Oh, you do see me? Yeah. Well, then I should just do it. For some reason in the, uh, in the browser here, it's not showing me the live stream. I'm just going to refresh and see if that helps. And it seems to be helping. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, now we've got something happening. Now we're going. Three people. Okay, good. All right. Hey, everybody. Jem Schofield here with the C47. It is Wednesday. Is it really March 1st? It's Wednesday, March 1st, 2017. And though I do speak to myself a lot, I am not speaking to myself right now. I am actually speaking to this gentleman here, and that is John Romer, who is a... Hey, Steve. Um, he is a professional photographer, a filmmaker, uh, proud new owner of the C300 Mark II and the 18280 Compact Servo, and just wrote a fantastic article, actually, on the C300 Mark II. Is it just published to your website right now? Yeah, it's on, on Okay, so it's, it's on, on blog. so it's on his blog, uh, which is John Romer, which is R-O-E-M-E-R. Blog.johnromer.com blog dot john j o n romer r o e m e r dot com it's a good article he knows how to write he's actually written stuff that's up on new shooter and uh, he knows his stuff so let's see wow this webcam is out of control right now okay so it is uh wednesday and this is not going to be an hour-long vlog but what i wanted to do in this episode was let you see a little bit more behind the scenes. I am going to use this um, webcam to do that. Uh, as always, if you have questions about production, cameras, lighting, anything like that, and by the way, I don't know what the hell this thing is with Grand Perry tomorrow with Blackmagic Design. Apparently, we're getting a new camera. Um, seven weeks before NAB. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but that, that should be interesting. So we'll see. That'll probably be something we get to talk about on Friday. So how is everybody? Hopefully well. Um, it's t-shirt weather outside right now. And when we drive down to our location on Friday morning, it might be snowing. So um, welcome to New Jersey and global warming and February into March in this weird world that we live in. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the studio space so you guys can see this. And by the way, I I've done episodes a long time ago. That's my ceiling and I actually have a grid up there, uh, one inch pipe that's there and that's just sort of the, you know, the house light. Um, that is a an Astra from uh, light panels. 
which is being used to put some light onto the main table here. This table is one of those frosted glass tables which seem to be increasingly hard to find at IKEA because they take away certain sizes and the ones that I used to like aren't always there. That's how good a webcam is not at white balancing by the way just so that you can see that. Um, that is a beadboard. Maybe John do you want to, I don't know if you can reach up to that. Um, this is basically uh, the ladders oh, over there. Yeah. So basically, this is up in the grid, um, and there's a quacker clamp there, a uh, duckbill clamp, whatever you want to call it. And this piece of foam core is a uh, four by four. It's actually beadboard. I uh, bought it Lowe's, and John's going to actually fold that for you guys so you can see it. And it's been scored and then gaffed so that you can fold it to a two by four size silver on one side and white on the other and we're using that basically for fill and um, it's a great thing you can go into a Lowe's uh, hardware you can pick up one of these uh, four by eight uh, sheets for about 25 to 30 dollars cut it in half have two four by fours score it put gaff tape on it and uh, Bob's your uncle and so there you go um, in the back of the studio over there we have another light panel that is basically the kick light or a little bit of edge. Um, that there, by the way, is the Rode Podcaster. This little monitor here, which we're going to be using for the production, is the small HD uh, 1303 HDR. And really nice little monitor. You can uh, battery power it. We've used it on a, a production, multicam production before. So I really like that. Um, this is the back of my current studio space. It's basically an infinity wall, so it's not a uh, psych, but it is built so that it is curved over in that corner. And, um, you know, it's good for this kind of stuff. On the table, we have, um, that's a red. Uh, there's a dragon over there. We're going to be doing some stuff with Otis lenses and talking about using those uh, full frame um, so they are perfect for that type of application. Um, this is a brand new, let me actually go into my image controls here and see if they work. I don't know if this uh, exposure, I'm trying to force this webcam. That is a, a new Chroma de Monde, uh, chart that you can't really see because it's completely overexposed. Um, but it is a new reflective surface called Accuflect. Three and it is sort of in between the glossy and the matte. So um, we were talking about eggshell and satin, you know, paint, and it sort of has that. It's uh, much less reflective. Camera-wise, um, I'm just going to move over here, and um, John's basically uh, been lighting this over there. We have what? This is COB 120D. So that's a, the uh, no T. T. So that's a tungsten version with the light dome. Uh, I actually just got the daylight version in. And we're using that as a key, and then swinging over to here, there's that bounce with the beadboard. Uh, we've got this um, working a couple of jobs, this light panel. It's obviously putting light on the table, but it's also um, filling in the dark spots on my bald head. Um, and then, of course, as I said before, there's a, a light panel, Astra, with, uh, with the softbox, with the grid. Um, what is that? Is it a 60? degree do you know what the degree is you know i'm not i'll take a look i See don't remember it. yeah and while you're yeah. doing that i'll show one other that's another light storm light that's a uh, a bicolor that we're using that to uplight this table here there's duvetine on the other yeah. side which uh reduces the spill you can just shout it out when you it's a 40. 40 it's a 40 degree so that uh is a 40 degree over there and then that is the otis um i don't know if you guys can hear me too well because I'm kind of far away from the microphone. You hold the camera. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Actually, let's do that. That'd be even better. My goodness. There Imagine that. Okay. <laughs> I don't usually have second hands. I hopefully you guys heard that. Did you guys hear that? I was kind of um, away from the microphone a little bit, but it should have been picking up a little bit. Uh, but there's the red. In fact, uh, it's so dark, I'm actually going to bring the exposure up a little bit. There you go. So there's the red uh, camera, and that has an Otis 85 millimeter lens on it. Um, that all geared up with the Zeiss lens gear, uh, the large one, which is what fits on the Otis lens. And then we have a follow focus system there. Uh, that one happens to be from Red Rock Micro. And then we obviously have rails and we'll be putting a bright tangerine uh, map box system on there later on, which is somewhere behind us 
over and all that stuff. Uh, it does a lot of stuff. Um, tripod system for this setup is going to be right next to John, the Compass 20. And uh, I really am a, a big fan of Miller tripod systems. So this is what we're going to be using for the RED camera. Um, but I'm also a big fan of the Sockler FSB-8. And that's what John is using for his C300 uh, Mark II. And again, there is that Cine uh, Servo, the compact Servo 18 to 80 on the C300 Mark II. And that is a beautiful little package that you can get a lot done. Um, yeah, I was a bit muted because then, <laughs> because then I, I realized that I was nowhere near the microphone. Nathan from Atlanta, Hotlanta representing. And uh, thank you for coming to the live stream. Uh, what else do we need to show them? Um, I mean, our second camera is the C100 Mark I. And what we've done, oh, what? we lost the webcam. Oh. Hold on. Oh. You have audio. <laughs> oh. oh, we're having a uh, Simpsons moment here. <laughs> it's okay, hold on. Webcam's coming back up. We're still on our feed. Let me make sure everything's okay with our sources. I feel pretty good about this. Hopefully you guys are still seeing a picture. You're going to have to let me know in a minute. And away we go. You lost picture. I don't know what's going on. It seems very, very fuzzy right now. Um, but let me see if I can fix that. That's weird. The, the whole picture now, when I plugged it in, uh, is feeling kind of wonky. So I'm going to switch over to the um, FaceTime camera and then go back back to this camera and then hopefully we've rejigged the system and you guys can tell me oh, it looks like it's a normal picture again okay good so you get, hopefully you guys can see that let's go back to what we were talking about so i'm going to hold this in place uh we've got the c100 mark one over there and what we're doing is we're using that for the close-up so 70 to 200 f4 is lens on there uh great in a situation like this we're gonna i think we're we're shooting at a 1250 iso we're shooting at a, a 6.3, so we get a little bit of depth of field in there. Um, okay, Antoine, we're going to talk about that 18 to 80 in a second. And you should also, as I said uh, earlier in the, in the beginning, you should check out uh, John's blog, which is blog dot... John Romer. John Romer, which is J-O-N-R-O-E-M-E-R dot -E -E com. And uh, he talks about the lens, he talks about the C300 Mark II and all that good stuff. Um, but basically the way we have the camera set up is we have it set up so that the C300 Mark II is set to um, basically the Canon Log um, custom picture preset. And that's designed to match with cameras like the C300 Mark I and cameras like the C100 Mark I and Mark II when you're using CP Cinema Locked. Um, the 18 to 80 compact servo is a little beast of a camera, uh, about five thousand fifty five hundred dollars US, I guess. A little less. A little. Oh, it's yeah. less. Is yeah. it under five now? No, it's, it's just like, right on the five ish five, mark. Yeah, yeah. Five and change. Five and change. US. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's a great match with the dual pixel CMOS AF. You wouldn't buy this lens if you were buying a C three hundred Mark II PL mount version. Uh, unless you were going and sending it in and getting the uh, lens mount swapped up. But uh, but beautiful color. You say, John, warmer than the L glass. Yeah, a little warmer. A little warmer. Um, incredibly sharp. Crazy. Crazy sharp, crazy detail. Just, just Which is, and, and designed to be really a true 4K, uh, you know, lens. Probably resolved to higher resolution than that even. Yeah. Um, and we're using the Sony transmitter and receiver, UWP. Um, so we've got the receiver on the uh, camera. I'll just be using a lav for this because it's a very small crew we're going to be using. It's myself, uh, John, and Mr. Daniel Fakos, who will be here tomorrow. So I don't think he'll make an appearance in this episode, maybe on Friday, depending on how the day goes and how the weather is. But this is basically our setup. Um, we're going to be talking about using these uh, lenses, and we're going to be talking, thank you very much, John, mm -hmm. uh, using these lenses with the, um, 
with cameras like, uh, you know, that have full frame sensors like REDS and also super 35 millimeter camera systems. And I've actually done quite a bit of production now um, with these Otis lenses. And now that there's three focal lengths, a 28, a 55 and an 85, you can really use this set, especially um, if you're using the lens gears from uh, Zeiss, which I'm very, very happy with in terms of build quality and, uh, you know, and gearing up the stuff. So it's exciting stuff. Um, we've been here uh, setting up since this morning, and we've got a couple of hours left uh, to kind of get everything ready before we wrap today. And then tomorrow morning, it's an early call, and we actually shoot instructional videos, or really not instructional videos, more of sort of an application uh, video which talks more about um, you know how these lenses can be used in production in different ways so I'm going to be talking about that um, do we have any questions before we wrap up this episode because unlike most days where I can go for a half an hour to an hour we actually have a punch list of stuff that we have to get done um, not the least of which is taking all of this complete crapola that's all over the place and uh, cleaning it up and getting it out of this space and uh, having it ready to shoot tomorrow. But I'm happy to answer a question or two about the studio setup, uh, about cameras. Um, I will not uh, weigh in yet on Blackmagic's um, soon-to-be announcement on some future camera that is going to save the world. Uh, but if you want to ask about anything else before I sign off, please, please do. Anybody got anything? Something? A little question? Um, okay, so we're going to be doing more of these live ones, and now that the studio is kind of set up, um, I'm going to be able to do some more stuff over the next couple of weeks from the studio and show you some more things, and uh, I'm excited about that because before um, it was sort of configured a different way, meaning very, very messy, and now it's sort of more back into its normal studio configuration so I can go into stuff with you guys. So... Um, I guess let's wait till the next episode. And uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, Steve, I'll answer that in a second. If you have any suggestions for topics, um, you can either put them underneath the actual show once it goes uh, and is archived on YouTube. Uh, please do not forget uh, important things like uh, visit my website, which is the c47.com. And uh, this thing right here is pretty awesome because the more people that subscribe to the channel, the more content I can create for you. Steve's question, what is this honker of a light over here? Well, that key light is the Aperture uh, COB uh, chip on board, uh, 120T as in tungsten light. And it is a dimmable, um, I guess so maybe you can, it? yeah, we can dim it. It's a dimmable um, uh, LED light, and it is only tungsten, so it's not bicolor. And uh, now we have it dimmed quite a bit. And it has a separate, basically, controller, which John is controlling right now. And we have it using the uh, light dome modifier, which is a big honkin, about three foot across um, softbox modifier. And what we're basically doing is actually, uh, John, if you want to hold this over here, and I'm going to turn the mic around. Um, essentially, just wait, guys. I'm just going to move the, uh, the mic over. So, I mean, this is pretty high key um, overall. But uh, what we're doing is we're essentially side lighting, and then we're using this to fill. We got a little bit of fill, obviously, from this as well. Uh, in fact, if we uh, turn that light off, you'll see that there's quite a, a dark spot here. And that's, there's a lot of ways that we could have handled that. Um, but we already had a light here, and the light was doing one job. So we tried, uh, and we saw that we can make that light do two jobs, as opposed to setting up a completely different light somewhere else or getting some additional bounce. So we did walk in some, uh, you know, some some basically bounce board uh, into place above and that seemed to eliminate most of the problem but this seems to eliminate it. Our uh, levels aren't adjusted yet to their final so we may bring the key down a little, we may create a little more contrast on this side. That is still to be decided um, but we are off to the races. We have to get some sleep uh, and John has to drive back down south. So I am going to wrap this thing up. Let me go back to the computer. Hold on. 
right there. Looks like uh, Steve output comparable on that light. Um, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna put it sort of in the you know naked, uh, probably in that 500 to 650 watt uh, tungsten equivalent output. I think that's pretty fair to say. It's definitely to me not a 1K. I mean, if we take a 1K tungsten light, it's gonna have more punch than that light is gonna have. Uh, but there's some pretty cool modifiers with it, and um, Eric Naso has some more information on ericnaso.com, uh, E-R-I-K-N-A-S-O.com, so you can check that out. And uh, I think we're done with this episode. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of the live stream.